Hello there and welcome to episode 81 of Little Big Knits. My name is Selma. I'm coming to you from Ottawa, Canada, where I live with my family and our cat Yoda. And you can find me as Selma Knits on Instagram and Ravelry. Very nice to have you here. Thank you for coming back if you have been here for a while. And hello if you are new. I hope you enjoy what I have to offer you today. So first of all, I really, really wanted to thank you all for your comments last time. Um, as you will remember, I had a bit of an accident. Um, I will be taking this off, but I had an accident on the 8th of May, so about a month ago, walking in the neighborhood, fell, fractured my wrist, and I had a fracture that came down this way as opposed to that way, it just came down the bone. I actually had two fractures, but the other one is, is kind of a consequence of that one, and <clears throat> there's nothing to do about that one. It'll heal on its own, but I required surgery. And so it's been a month, and um, the cast was taken off. I've been doing um, exercises at home, and I get to take this off. So I will be taking this off because when I'm at home sitting around, I tend to take this off. I do a lot of range of motion exercises with my wrist. It's getting better all the time. So I just wanted to thank you uh, for the comments um, and your lovely, lovely comments. I really, really appreciate it. I felt so, so held um, by all the comments uh, here on YouTube and Instagram, and I really, really appreciate it. Um, just really, really nice. And uh, some podcasters mentioned me as well, and I just really, really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, my healing is coming along. Now I'm gonna be talking to you about this cardigan very soon, um, but before my accident, I started developing a uh, repetitive strain syndrome, which I mentioned last time. And that has actually been um, a bit of an issue <laughs> over this last month. And while my wrist is, it's not completely there, but it's getting there, uh, it's still a little bit, a little bit swollen but you know it's it's getting there the, the repetitive strain has been a bit of a confounding factor in all of this i will be starting official uh, physiotherapy in about a week and so i'll be asking them to help me with the fracture but also to help me with the repetitive strain syndrome uh, I've been knitting quite frantically, well, frantic is not the right world word, but, you know, quite uh, daily, daily and uh, obsessively at times and just love my knitting practice so much for years. I've been doing it for years and I've never, ever had issues with my arms. Um, so I think something about this cardigan being cotton and being lace I think that must have been it. And I was on, I was traveling so I could knit for long periods of time when I was waiting in airports or on the plane. So I think all of that had an impact on causing some repetitive strain. But anyway, that's, that's that. So thank you, thank you for all your lovely comments and warm wishes and prayers and just commiseration and sharing your own stories. So thank you for that. Um, one, somebody mentioned, you know, that she, it took her a long time to get back to yoga. And I was like, I really do miss my yoga, but we'll get there. I think my body would really, really appreciate some yoga. So we'll get there. Anyway, a um, couple of other things before we get on with the knitting. I was having a hard time the last couple of episodes putting my notes at the bottom of the screen. I don't know why that I was having technical problems. I don't know if I need to update my my editing software, my iMovie, um, but it was making me swear. <laughs> I was getting very frustrated. So uh, there might have been times where there weren't notes as much because it was just ridiculous. I don't know what, what was wrong with the, the software that it just wasn't allowing me to put notes at the bottom. Um, and a couple of other little things. Uh, I have a Kofi account or a coffee account and the link is below. So if you happen to want to support the podcast financially, you are welcome to do that. And the link is below. I don't usually mention it, but somebody said I really should. So I'm mentioning it. 
<laughs> I'm following orders. Uh, so yeah, so if you want to uh, support this channel in any way, you can do that below. We have the scrappy, stushy Mal going on right now as well. Uh, so um, feel free to join in. That is meaning using bits and bobs, leftovers, making scrappy projects, or using leftovers from projects that have been finished. Like if you have a couple of skeins left over from a, another project, even though they're not older, you could still use those. Otherwise, if it's from stash, you use stash that is older than the end of December of, of, of 2020. That's what it was. So before December 31st, 2020, if it came into your life, that would be qualified as stashy. Um, if you are like me, I know that many people, uh, many people don't stash yarn necessarily, um, but you may have bits and bobs left over from other projects, but I have a closet full of yarn that I won't show you. It's a disaster. Um, it's not a disaster. It's actually relatively well organized, but there's too much yarn in there. So, um, but yeah, if you've got stash that's been sitting around for a while um, and you use it, that would qualify for the stashy, um, for the scrappy stashy now. We've got um, a thread in the Little Big Knits Ravelry group where you can go and share and comment and so forth. And we also have a hashtag on Instagram, uh, hashtag Scrappy Stashy Mal, which you can use as well. This is going until the end of the year, at which point uh, we'll close the make along and we'll have some prizes. So uh, feel free to participate at any time and whips are welcome. So if you have a blanket, a scrappy blanket that's been going on for a while, you can join in as well and maybe this will be motivation to finish it. All right, let's get started with the knitting content. So this is actually, uh, would be an entry for me for the scrappy stashy mal uh, because this is using cotton that I bought. Oh, I checked at one point. I don't know, at least 2017, somewhere 2017, 2018. So it's been in my life for a while. This is Patton's Grace in the taupe colorway, which I think was 2021. Um, and I had bought it in the discount bin at uh, Wool Time, which is a, a local knitting shop, a rather large knitting shop. And uh, this was in the discount bin. And so I bought a whole bunch of it. And I made this gorgeous Corin cardigan by Rebecca Klo, which is a bottom up construction, all over lace uh, with a drop shoulder. And uh, if you've been around for a few episodes, you know that I test knit this for her and I made a blue version out of a wool nettle yarn. So more of a wintry one and I really wanted a summer one. And that one was a round neck, long sleeve version. So I decided this time to make the V neck because Rebecca has included these different uh, versions. You can make a short sleeve, you can make a long sleeve, a round neck or a V neck. So I decided that this Patton's Grace, which had been sitting in there in my stash for quite a while, I knew I was like, I think that needs to become a cardigan. Now, this year is not the year of taupes and beiges. This really is the year of bright colors. So part of me was like, oh, I kind of wish this was a bright color, <laughs> but I still really like it. And I feel like it's just this very, very sort of classic cardigan. I'll stand up and show you. Um, I put the buttons on and I'll tell you about the buttons in a little bit. I put the buttons on very badly, I realized. Uh, when I went to wear it the other day, I was like, boy, did I ever do a terrible job with these buttons? They're just really, really flimsily put on. So I'm going to have to redo them. So I won't close this for you, but I did want to show it to you. So you can see that it's, it's just going to be a very, very nice, easy summer cardigan. And I have this lovely top and I tucked it into my, my jean skirt today. But yeah, just really, really loved, loved this. And I loved the lace so much, although I'm starting to realize that I, 
I probably have to be a little bit careful with that right now. Um, I have been able to knit and I've been making, I, I think stocking it is, is really where I, I need to be, where I am mostly. Um, just keep things quite simple or, you know, I think with lace, you're doing a lot of movement like this and I think it just, just caused a strain syndrome. However, I'm really happy with the cardigan. Very much like it. I decided to make three quarter length sleeves. I had, I had thought I would make short sleeves and then I thought, I don't think I'm gonna like that. So I decided to make three quarter length sleeves instead. And yeah, I just really, really like it. But yeah, my button is put on very, very flimsily. Um, don't know what I was thinking there, that one and the bottom one. So I'm gonna have to put those back on because right now if I close that, it just pulls the button. So Selma was not, Selma was not thinking. Um, and I also think that I probably, probably could have done five buttons because there's a lot of space between. Um, I mean, I probably wouldn't wear this closed anyway, but, and this because it's pulling, I, I think that if there had been one more button, I think it would have had less of a gap. Um, but it fits really, really nicely and I just really like it, very much like it. So let me tell you about the buttons. Uh, you'll recall a couple of episodes ago that I talked to you about Rick's Racks, which is a button shop in Montreal. So today I'll be showing you a vlog towards the end of the episode of my trip to Montreal to Knit City Montreal with Mecca of Skeins of Dreams and Mel from Mel Makes Stuff. So I forgot to tell you that at the beginning that the end of this and some of my content will be interspersed with Knit City Montreal. So we ended up going to Rick's Racks and I bought two sets of buttons um, and these ones were for this cardigan. I didn't have the project with me, but I was quite sure that these would work and they really do. They really do. This has got a bit of a moviness to this and these ones have a bit of a coffee-ness to them, but I I think it just it just works. They're just they were the right size. I thought they were they were great. So I came out of there with these buttons for this cardigan and they have ended up on there. But I actually bought five buttons and I kind of thought, hmm, I should have probably made five buttonholes. But I only made four. I think Rebecca has you make five, but I clearly wasn't following instructions. So yeah. That is uh, finished object number one. Um, I believe I've told you everything about it. It's a fabulous pattern, really, really fabulous pattern. Um, so I can highly recommend this. Um, I really like it. I don't think that I've got, I've got biggish arms and I somehow feel like the drop construction, drop shoulder construction is not the best best for me but I still really like it. And I think it's gonna be a lovely, lovely, lovely addition to my wardrobe this summer, actually, um, with a nice t-shirt. The one thing I realized is I have a lot of t-shirts that are more closed here. I realized it needs something a little bit more open. And I don't have a lot like that in, in sort of a cream. Um, and I also really need new white pants because I thought this with a white t-shirt and white pants and just a nice, taupe cardigan I thought would be really really lovely so I need to take uh, one of my kids shopping actually for some clothes for an event so I thought I might see if I happen to see any nice tops or any white pants for myself so there we go so I've got some uh, lovely um, things to share with you in terms of whips. So let's get on to that. First though, I have to show you my cup, my cup of tea. It's I'm having some, some oolong tea in here. I have been following this potter. She is out of, oh, where was she out of? I think she's out of BC or was she out of Alberta? But one of our Western provinces, her name is Carol Harris. And I believe it's Carol Harris Ceramics. Um, I'll put a link down below, but her work, I've been following her for, for a long time and waiting and waiting. She doesn't have updates very often, 
Um, but I'd been chatting with her. So when she was going to have an update, she said, I just want you to know um, there will be an update if you want to, you know, go ahead. Everything's up there if you want to go ahead and, and shop. So I, I'd been looking at this mug and waiting for it. And it's just so, so beautiful. I really, really love this. So I decided that I needed to buy it. <laughs> I have mugs in two cupboards at this point because I've got quite a few of them. But this one, I actually broke a couple of favorite, not favorite, but mugs that I'd had for a long time that I've really liked. One that I used to have at my office that had beautiful flowers on it. I just loved that mug and it broke one day. And then another mug that I've had for years as well that I also used to have at the office. Maybe I shouldn't have brought them home. Um, and I brought home at one point when I changed jobs and it also broke. So I gave myself permission to buy this. And yeah, her work is just, just beautiful. It's got, you know, a very sort of, in a way, Art Nouveau feeling as well as kind of a Mediterranean sort of almost uh, Turkish kind of design on it. Her work is just beautiful. So. All right. So the last time I was here for one of my knitting confessions, so to speak, I shared with you in this fabulous bag that Annina of Anni Yuti Knits made for me. I shared a pattern that I started when I was in Finland. And I have managed to finish the body. And actually, I remember that last time I told you that I was sort of holding off working on this and, and I was able to finish the second sleeve. I worked on it just like one or a couple of rows a day uh, because I didn't have that much left to go and, and I got to it. And I also managed to finish the body of this sweater, which is the DRK Everyday Sweater by Andrea Mowry. And it's a really easy kind of lovely, um, <laughs> sorry, really easy, lovely yoke sweater. And I wanted to make this using these yarns that I had gotten in Finland which is uh, the Saye um, Linen Decay, I believe she calls it. And um, it's just absolutely beautiful yarn. I can't find the bands, I don't seem to have them, but I got it in this blue and in this sort of cream color. And this is a DK weight and I believe it is 70% Merino 30% wool. No, never mind. 70% wool, 30% linen. <laughs> That's how it goes. And organic uh, wool as well. And so I had gotten this, I had ordered it before going to Finland. And I shared this with you last time, but I hadn't finished the body. So I've now finished the body. And I added a tiny little bit of a-line shaping to it because I've realized that I kind of like that when they just go out just a tiny bit. Um, I find it quite flattering and um, when I was casting on or swatching I was going to be between two sizes so I went with the smaller size on top and then I it all worked out really well actually I didn't need to add anything um, and I just decided that it had a really nice fit up here and I just added a little bit of A-line to it. So, yeah, so I finished the body and because this is more of an in-between season and we're really now heading into the warmth of summer, I'm gonna hold off on the sleeves on this um, so that I can get a couple of summer knits done. Um, and then I'll work on this probably at the end of August to to start being able to wear this in September and October and maybe in the winter as well. I'm really looking forward to this. It knits very, it fits very, very nicely. And um, it's just been an absolute joy. This yarn is absolutely stunning. Stunning, stunning yarn. Now I had trouble ordering the yarn um, and I ended up ordering it 
through Anlina. I don't know. She's a fairly new uh, yarn dyer in Finland. Um, and I don't know if she is, if she's, uh, I'm sure she's constantly updating, but I don't know if she's making it possible for people from other countries to, to buy at this point. But I had a hard time doing that at that time. So, but yeah, I knew that that was the one purchase that I really wanted to make in Finland. Um, and I did. So that's uh, whip number one. Whip number two. I shared with you this book last time, the Making Memories book that uh, was published by uh, Claudia Quintanilla, who is the owner of Unit Toronto. And she is a quite prolific designer and makes fabulous, fabulous patterns, some of which are free, some of which are not. And she has created this book of children's patterns which was published by Laine Publishing, so the people who make uh, Laine um, magazines. And it is such a fabulous book for children's knits. And I feel like I probably won't ever really need to buy another children's pattern unless there's something really specific that I needed, but there are such beautiful, lovely, simple, and very easily adaptable patterns in here. It's just a beautiful, beautiful collection with absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, um, gorgeous paper, gorgeous layout, and really, really nice. And some of these patterns also have adult versions of them. Like there is the Catedral. It doesn't have, the original sweater doesn't have this little, little uh, crocheted, is it crocheted or is it knit, knit collar? But it's a sweater that she has in an adult version as well. And the unit Toronto is actually running, um, running a knit along for this pattern in case you wanted to join along. But this pattern, uh, this book came at the perfect time because I needed to make something for someone on my team who is having a baby. And the baby has arrived and uh, it'll be a month old soon-ish uh, in the next few days actually. And um, I am making from here the Luca cardigan. I had hoped to finish the cardigan before I podcasted. I'd actually wanted to podcast last week, but it just didn't happen. Um, so I'm making this cardigan. This is obviously an older child. It's got a kind of a broken rib pattern on it. And Unit Toronto send me, sent me yarn for it as well. They sent me beautiful, beautiful yarn by Sweet Georgia. This is the Sweet Georgia Superwash DK in the Hemlock colorway, which is this incredibly rich green color. It's just stunning. And they sent me two skeins of this to make the cardigan, and I've been working on it, and it's just such a joy. As I said, I'd kind of hoped to finish it, but I haven't had as much knitting time, and because of the strain, I've had to sort of knit in smaller spurts and be very careful, but here it is. It's a bit wrinkled because it was in the bag, but oh my gosh, it's so incredibly beautiful. And they chose, like I gave, I said, you know, choose a color for me that's between, you know, somewhere in the green to blue range. And um, they sent me this stunning, stunning rich green. And it just shows the pattern of the stitch pattern so very nicely. So I hope to finish this. We're hoping to get together um, with my colleague who had the little baby soon. And uh, this will be one of the presents. Somebody else has done some embroidery for her. And uh, we're also going to get a, a collective gift and, um, and give that to her. And I have some lovely buttons that I bought years and years ago and was on an item that I made from one of my children. Um, these little bear buttons and I think that's what I'm going to use for this cardigan and I had eventually taken the buttons off because the item that I made actually never really fit properly and so I really didn't use it a lot it had way too big a, a, a an opening for the neck 
Um, so I decided that's it. This thing doesn't need to be around anymore, but I wanted to save the buttons. So I think I'm going to put the buttons on here because they're just beautiful, pewter, pewter buttons of a bare face. So yeah, so I will probably show this to you again, if not in my hands, in a video of some kind. Really, really lovely pattern. And um, there is a vest in there. There's a vest with the same stitch pattern, and I'm thinking I might have to make that for, for this little boy at some point because it's just awfully cute. And you know, I do like a good vest. And um, let's see if I can find it quickly but it's very very nice oh here it is so yeah and I will have yarn left over because it's probably going to take about 1.3 skeins perhaps so I may make a hat with the remainder of it for him if I can get to it um, and that's something that I can also deliver at a later date uh, we've got nice warm days at this point probably doesn't need a uh, a wool hat. So that is uh, whip number two. And thank you to, to Unit Toronto because that was just the right thing to come at the right time. It was just fabulous. The last thing was also a gift from a yarn shop in BC called Your Next Knit. And she contacted me and asked me if uh, I would be interested in uh, receiving some yarn and offering um, viewers of Little Big Knits a discount code. And I was like, sure. Smita just opened her shop not very long ago. So her website is still in development. She's still um, building up her, 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 her offering, <laughs> so to speak. But she had some lovely yarns on her website. And I ended up choosing this BC Garn Lino. This beautiful, beautiful lavender color that kind of matches my nails at the moment. Um, and I said, send me the quantity you want and I will determine what I make with that. I was like, either, you know, cause she wasn't quite sure how much to send me. I said, well, three or four skeins. And if you, whatever you send me, I'll, will determine what I make with it. Cause I was actually between making a shawl, a summer shawl with this, uh, which would actually look really lovely with this brown, or making some sort of a summer top. And she sent me four, so I decided that I would make a summer ranunculus. Now I have not gotten very far because I really wanted to focus on uh, finishing this as well as getting the cardigan going in. Because I'm not knitting quite as much as I normally would. Um, I cast this on and I did the ribbing and I've stopped there. So as soon as I finish the cardigan, I am going to pick this up. So I've done only the ribbing so far. And although I have made six other ranunculus sweaters, two have been, were gifts and I have four myself, they're all woolly ones. I haven't made a summer one yet. So I'm very excited to make one and it's going to have quite a loose gauge. So it's, I'm having the same feeling as I did with my first ranunculus when I realized, when I thought, how am I going to wear this thing? Is this really going to be something that I enjoy in my, in my wardrobe? And I wore it a lot and ended up making many more. So I, I, I'm sort of like, am I going to be able to wear this like loose, you know, kind of, airy, uh, very transparent ranunculus. And so I'm very curious to make it and see how, how it works out. Um, yeah. And I'm also going to be a little bit careful with this, with the linen, as well as the little bit of lace that it has. But Smita from uh, Your Next Knit, here is the, the logo, has offered uh, Little Big Knits uh, viewers a discount code of Selma15. So feel free to go to your next knit and uh, see what she's got. I'll put the link down below as well so that you can um, you can go and, and use that code if you want to. So thank you Smita for that and 
this will get knit up. It's also in this great bicycle bag that I've had for a couple of years now that was made by um, by Amelia, who's got the Mila Sweet Makes on Etsy. Don't really know how much uh, Amelia is making bags these days, actually, but really fun fabrics. And this has been a bag that I just, I really like. It's a great summer bag with bicycles on it, even though I can't ride my bicycle this year. Just the day before I had my stupid accident, I was um, powering up my battery for my electric bicycle because I was excited about riding my bicycle. And then this happened. And I don't think I'll be riding my bicycle for a while. One thing I also wanted to mention is, and I mentioned this last time, and then I totally forgot. I think it was because I did not make myself a note, or did I? I am, as of today, <laughs> going to start a Nordic cal. So this can include crochet or knitting, um, and it is for the Nordic countries. So Nordic cal means that you're either using yarn or knitting a pattern um, from a Nordic maker designer. Okay, so in fact, two of my projects today, and I forgot to mention it to you earlier. Where is everything gone? So obviously my DRK sweater that is in this blue and white stripe, this would qualify because although the pattern designer is American, the yarn is from Finland. And then the other one. Oh, yes, my ranunculus. The ranunculus is a Japanese designer, but BC Garn is a Danish company, I believe, right? Is it Danish or is it Norwegian? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look into that. I'm not 100% sure. But, um, so if it's a Nordic yarn, so Nordic means uh, there are um, Finland, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, and Iceland, as well as Oland and the Faroe Islands. And um, those are the, the Nordic countries. And so this is a new knit along, which I'm really excited about actually, because it's gonna get me making the Lento. Um, I have two versions of the Lento that I want to make. <laughs> Um, well, this one was the original thing that I wanted to make a, a cream tweed one, but this might end up being something else. Um, but I had got yarn in, in Brussels, if you'll recall, a beautiful, beautiful gray blue yarn that's going to become a Lento. And, um, there are some other yarn, uh, other patterns by Mayu KP that I would like to make. And yeah, so, um, that's starting now, the Nordic, Nordic Cal, and it's going to go until March of March, the end of March of 2024. You can use the LBK Nordic Cal as the hashtag on Instagram to participate there. If you are on Ravelry, there will be a thread as well where you can post your finished objects and discussion. I kind of like just having one thread uh, personally. Um, it's a little bit easier to manage and less confusing for participants. And so, yeah, um, it's always so inspiring to see people when you use a, a hashtag or the thread in Ravelry. Like, I really enjoy going to see what people make. I haven't been able to keep up with comments as much, um, but I really like to see what people are doing with their stash, for example, or their scrappy. And in this case, it'll be Nordic. And there are so many beautiful yarns from the Nordic countries and so many beautiful designers as well. Um, Anne Yuti Knits, who I just mentioned the Tankarti from, she would qualify as a Nordic uh, designer. And um, Kamijo Yarns would be a Nordic yarn that one could use and there are just so many and just think of lopi um so there's just so many possibilities it's just wonderful ketu knits from finland for example or um holst yarns would qualify as well 
uh, yeah, lots and lots of possibilities there. So if you're excited about that as much as I am, join in and uh, we will have this knit along and crochet along together. So that's really all the whips I have. Now I wanted to answer one question before I move on to all things Knit City. Um, because I had a, a couple of people ask me about adapting this pattern to a lighter weight yarn. And you'll have to excuse me because there's going to be kitchen noises. Um, because this is meant, this pattern is meant to be knit on, was it five millimeter needles with a sort of a proper full DK weight yarn? And Patton's Grace is considered more of a sport weight yarn. So I had people ask me about modifying this pattern for a lighter weight yarn. Um, and I, I think that you absolutely could do that. And Rebecca has so many sizes. I can't remember how many, but she's got a lot of sizes. I think there were 10, if I remember correctly. Um, so if you needed to modify your, um, if you wanted to use a lighter or a heavier yarn, you could easily modify it. So I had a couple of people ask me about that. I'm going to refer you in part to, I think it was episode 13. And it's funny because Leanne of the Nitty Stew recently talked about my sweater math episode. It's called sweater math. And I think it was episode 13. Um, and I've had a lot of people go back and watch and comment. So that's, that's really fun. And thank you for mentioning that Leanne. Um, in that episode, sort of like towards the end of the episode, I talk about sweater math. And in it's the same principle here where, you know, if you have a yarn that doesn't quite meet gauge, the most important thing is to think about fabric and producing a fabric. So even though the pattern in this case was knit on larger needles, I knew that I couldn't get a nice fabric using the same size needle because this is a lighter weight yarn and it would look weird right it would just be really flimsy and perhaps too holy so i thought let me go down uh, a needle size or two and i ended up choosing a four and a half and i did a swatch and i really liked it my gauge of course was a little bit off it was a smaller gauge i don't even remember anymore and so i basically calculated what would i want for my my chest, right? If you, let's say, I'm gonna just take an example. If you have a 40 inch chest and you want the sweater to be 46 inches because you want about six inches of ease, you want, you know, you want something to be a little boxier, you're going to calculate based on your gauge. If your gauge is 20 stitches, you're gonna calculate that in 20, stitches in four inches, or it would be two and a half centimeters, which makes it a bit more complicated in metric. Your 20 stitches, you would divide by four, right, to get to one inch. And then you would multiply that by 46 to get to 46 inches. So whatever that said, I'm not gonna do the math right now in my head, but whatever that said, whatever that four times 46 would be, you would look in the pattern for the stitch count that was about like that. And if it didn't fit quite on, you would just decide if you would want to go up a tiny bit or down a tiny bit. And that should work. It usually works. It didn't work for me. I ended up going, getting a slightly, I ended up going, I think I ended up overcompensating and I went a little too big and I started, I knit about this much and I had to rip it back and start over again. And I'm very happy with what I got because I think that this will be just a really easy fit nice cardigan to wear. So I hope that answers um, that question uh, more or less, but feel free to go and watch uh, episode 13. And also if you modify using a lighter yarn or heavier yarn, bear in mind that that does have an impact on your yardage. I don't know, I haven't actually weighed this, I should have weighed it. I don't know exactly how much yarn I used here, but I know that I used more yardage than I did in my first version. My first version, I think it was around 800 yards, and this one was definitely more in the 900 and 950 yards. So it has an impact on how much yarn you end up using. 
So hopefully that answers your question. So on to Knit City Montreal. Um, and I wanted to say before I forget, uh, just wanted to say hello and thank you to all the people who stopped me to say hi. It was really, really wonderful. In fact, it was just lovely saying hello to people. Um, I didn't actually come away with a lot of yarn. I'll show you what I what I bought. Um, but it was just just really, really wonderful to say hi. So thank you to all of those of you who who did say hello. And um, it was just also, you know, nice to um, hear such lovely things about the podcast. Thank you. I can't, you know, of course, it's lovely. And there were people from all over the place. Knit City Montreal was uh, was bigger than it was last year. There were more vendors. And um, there were people from the States, there were people from Ottawa. I met a lot of people from Ottawa, which was funny that we met each other in Montreal. And uh, there were even some Australians, and it was kind of fun meeting. Met a couple of couples who both watched the podcast, so hello to you. And um, yeah, it was just, it was really, really nice. And it was also really nice to see uh, so many Canadian and especially from, from that area, French Canadian and Quebec makers of different kinds. Um, obviously lots of yarn, but there were there were other other ones as well. It was just it was really, really a wonderful, wonderful show. Quite overwhelming. A lot of people, especially on the Saturday morning. Saturday afternoon was definitely much quieter, and I think Sunday was probably overall a quieter day. Um, certainly talking to people a lot meant that I that I didn't look at yarn as much, so I didn't buy as much. I also had kind of a list of what I wanted, and I pretty much stuck to that. So that was really great. So I also just heard yesterday, yesterday was International Knit in Public Day. And I actually, for the first time, went to a Knit in Public event at Fabrications, which was really lovely. And um, I think I'll make a point of doing that from now on. I just never have. I don't know why. Um... But I think I was talking to somebody yesterday and apparently Knit City Montreal is going to be in Toronto next year. So the Knit City brand, so to speak, um, they have Vancouver, which is their original show. But it looks like they're going to perhaps go back and forth between Toronto and Montreal and they're going to be in Toronto next year. So I think that's going to be really, really exciting and dynamic. You know, it sort of makes things exciting. They're moving around. So I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, I am going to take you on a vlog um, and show you uh, from when Mega came here and picked me up because I couldn't drive at that time. I was in a full-blown cast. I think you saw that last time. So she very graciously came and came to Ottawa on the Thursday night. She stayed here. And then Friday morning, we drove to Montreal. We um, uh, had lunch. We met up with Mel, we went to a couple of shops. So I'm gonna take you through all of that and then I'll come back and intersperse with uh, some other information and share with you some of my, my purchases. And another whip. Well, hello there, we are in the car. I'm here with Mega, my lovely driver, who picked me up since I can't drive. <laughs> <laughs> and we're on our way to Montreal. It's Friday, so we are going to be um, just arriving in Montreal, probably having lunch and possibly hitting a yarn store. Yes, yes, definitely. And if that's the case, we'll take you with us. And, um, and uh, yeah, we'll take you with us on this little trip. called Antipod to have brunch.
found some parking and we're on our way to La Maison Tricoté. Mel is trying to find parking. Hopefully she eventually will. Um, Montreal is a challenging city for parking and driving, FYI. <laughs> um, lots of one-way streets, lots of um, residential parking on streets which are uh, allocated to the residents so you can't park there. And it makes it an interesting interesting conundrum when you're trying to park a car. So we're just waiting for, for Mel and uh, hopefully she'll find parking soon and the three of us will be together. We got somebody doing some filming. <laughs> I think you may see that on the Skeins of Dreams podcast. So that was a short trip to La Maison Tricoté and we're actually going to this button shop, Rick's Racks, which I showed you guys another time. So it was so nice to meet up with Nancy as well for dinner and Nancy and I met last year at Knit City Montreal and had dinner together so it seemed like a bit of a tradition. Perhaps I'll see Nancy in Toronto next year. Um, but uh, we were supposed to meet with Leanne. Leanne was supposed to come and if you watch the Nitty Stew she wasn't able to come unfortunately and was much missed but I hope we'll get to see each other at some point. We'll see. Um, yeah. So one of the things that we decided to do in our discussions with Mega and Mel, we were chatting and I, I sort of said, would you like to do a swap? Because I have a lot of yarn and sometimes you make purchases and they're not quite what you expected them to be or um, you've outgrown a color um, or you bought a color and then you... <clears throat> you thought after, what was I thinking? So we decided to do a swap. 
and um, we each brought a rather ridiculous amount of yarn, which you can see in this video. We all laid out our yarn. Um, Mel used to have a, a yarn company, so she actually had some leftover yarns from her dying time, her dying of dying yarn, of course. And I had um, I had some yarn, and Mega is going through a very colorful phase and really wanted to get rid of some neutrals. So I'm not going to show you everything, but I have to say that between what um, what they took from me and what then I ended up coming back to Ottawa with my friends Sue and Liz and I had some at le le yarns left over and I was like, Sue's going to love this green. Um, I think, you know, Liz is going to like this pink. <laughs> so they ended up taking the rest of my yarn. So although I came home, let's see if I can pick this up with a rather large haul, which I'm not going to show all of to you, <laughs> I promise. Um, I actually came home with less yarn because I, I got rid of all my stashed yarn. I thought that I would probably come home with some and then um, perhaps, you know, do a de-stash of some kind. That did not happen because Liz and Sue took the rest of my yarns. Um, and I'm just going to show you a couple and sort of actually the basis of this conversation with Mega and uh, Mel. I had been asking Mega because she had this cone of oatmeal. This is the Holst Super Soft in oatmeal. And I had originally asked her to bring this cone so that I could just see what the color was like. Uh, because I found, I was like, can I trust what's on their website? I couldn't figure it out. And so, and then, you know, she was like, well, you can have it. And then just in the conversation, like, do we want to do this de-stash? So this was one of, this was kind of the impetus uh, for that, for that idea. So this is something that I came home with. And then you may recall that I've used a certain pink multiple times. It's actually here in my, in my lap. I've used this pink by Mel when she had the Whale Street yarn. I made an Oslo hat. I put it in my stripes sweater. Um, it's gone into uh, some socks and, I, and it went into my crochet blanket and I still have a little nugget. And she said, I still have some of that, you know? And I was like, oh yes, I really would love some more. So this is going to become a sweater and I'll show you a little bit later what I got to go with it to become that sweater. But I got a sweater quantity of this that I'm very, very excited about. Um, and oh my gosh, there are so many. She also, I also took a sweater quantity of this orange uh, tweed that she had. That is just beautiful. Um, and then the other thing that I'll note right now, actually, no, that's not the only thing I'll note right now, is that there was also this cone from Wooly Knit. You may recall that I had some super wash natural tweed yarn that I wanted to make a lento out of. <clears throat> but there was a weird tinge to that. And I was left with this slight, you know, still this desire to make a tweed sweater. And so part of the conversation with Mecca was also, she said, well, I've got this tweed. Um, and I was like, well, I'd like to see it. And well, I ended up coming home with it. <laughs> And then the other thing I will note, um, so I will be knitting the lilac colored ranunculus. And then Mel came to the swap with leftovers of this Katia Concept ca cotton cashmere. Now, last year I made a sweater out of this yarn in orange, the Afra sweater by Isabel Kramer, and I just love this yarn. It is, it, it wears very nicely. Uh, I think I've washed that sweater a couple of times and it looks great. I wear it a lot. I wore it to Knit City Montreal. Um, you'll see it in a little bit. Um, and so when she brought this, there was just about enough to make a little top but I ended up going to uh, my local yarn store and buying an extra of the darker of the gray. 
and because there wasn't quite enough and I wanted this to become the main color and I bought one ball of white and I'm going to be making a striped Tolsta, uh, which is a tea that Rebecca Klo, same designer, as I said last time, Rebecca is a designing dynamo. Um, I'm going to be making a striped Tolsta with these three colors and I may add a pop of something else. I haven't quite decided yet, but I'm very much looking forward to making this. So I'll be making this after I finish the ranunculus. Those might end up being my only summer tops this year, but if I have time for one more summer top this year, I definitely want to make the Tankarti by Anni Yuti, uh, or Annina Yuti, Anni Yuti Nitz. She uh, recently uh, published this pattern and I just love it. And I have a sweater that I made years ago out of a beautiful DK cotton that I never wear. It just didn't work out. It, it was fine at the time. I've put on weight since then. It didn't have the ease that it should have had at the time and it had a really wide neck and it just, I never wore it. So I'm going to pull that apart and it's going to become a tankarti. So I'm excited about that. But first I'll start with the Tolsta, I think. So those are some of the uh, yarns from the, the swap. And if you watch uh, Mega of Skeins and Dreams and Mel, they've both talked a little bit about the trip to Montreal as well. And they've shown some of their uh, purchases as well. So from our swap, there is actually uh, something else that I grabbed off of Mega's table, one of her neutrals that she was getting rid of. And well, it's gray and fluffy and could Selma not pick it up? She knew that I would pick this up. She brought it because she knew that I would pick this up. There were four skeins of this Rowan Cashmere Haze. And I really didn't know what I would do with it, but I could not just leave it there. And then I decided to cast something on. I have, I have drunk the Kool-Aid for the Sophie scarf. I've actually been wanting a little, just a little something. And I've been looking at the Sophie scarf and looking at other people's versions going, that's actually a really handy little thing. I kind of like that. But I couldn't think of anything in my stash that I would make that in. And when I saw that haze, I was like, that's what I want. I want a little Sophie scarf made out of this. Just perfect under my coat in the springtime, just a little a little something and it's just been a nice and easy knit that I've done here and there. I mean, this is something I could have finished, but because I'm knitting a little bit less, you know, I've done it here and there and I'm just about at the halfway mark. I've got a wee bit more. Um, and so again, this is one that I don't feel I need to hurry because I'm obviously not gonna wear this this summer, but I have a blue spring coat and I thought this would just look really, really gorgeous underneath it. So I'm really excited about this. And I'm actually using two strands to knit that on 3.5 millimeter needles. And I'm, I, I was gonna make the small Sophie scarf, but I realized it's gonna be too small. So I'm going towards the larger version of the two, um, but I may stop a little earlier and just start the decreases. And that's actually the nice thing about a, t a pattern like that. Um, it's just, you can adapt it and make it what you want. So yeah, so I'm excited about that. It's in a bag by Jenna Rose, uh, who, well, she used to be local, but I think she's moved further away, but she's a wonderful, wonderful print, silkscreen print artist, as well as, um, actually, where's the silkscreen? Anyway, she's, she's a print maker and also a bag maker of different kinds, buckets and bag, different kinds of bags. So this is a whip that was kind of an immediate cast on well, with, the, with this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful cashmere haze. All right, let's move on to the next part of the vlog. And I'll see you at the end with what I got at Knit City. We have arrived. We've arrived.
So what did I get at Knit City Montreal? This yarn, which came from Mel, I knew immediately what I wanted to do with it. And that is the, I think it's called the Lacy Boxy by Jochi Locatelli. I'll put a picture here so you can see it. I just really like that. And I actually saw a beautiful version at Knit City Montreal that somebody was wearing with the fade concept that it has, but I don't want to make a fade. Um, I don't know what it is, but I have a mental block with fades. It's just like, it's just this weird thing. But anyway, um, so I'm clearly not a fade person, but I thought I would like to use this for that and make a very romantic version. And so I ended up getting, there's slightly different color, but I think that when I actually knit with this, the, the, it's going to be a lighter color because it's just going to be one strand of the mohair. But I'm going to make the Lacy Boxy using these two yarns. And this is, I looked a lot, I couldn't find a color and I had forgotten to bring this with me. So Mel was with me and Mel thought this should work. Um, because it's, you know, once you don't have the skein with you, it can be really, really deceiving when you're looking at yarns. So this is yarn by Julie Asselet, and this is her Anatolia base, which is a 60% mohair and 40% silk. And I am very excited to make that sweater. So that is going to happen at some time in the hopefully near future. And then another purchase that I made, the other two purchases that I made are both from Sonder Yarns. I really want to make the Simple Stripe Pullover from, from Pearl Soho. It's a DK weight sweater, but I am going to adapt it to fingering weight. And it's a micro stripe sweater. The original pattern is in a black and white, I believe, or was it black and light gray? I'm not 100% sure. And you'll actually recall, hopefully, maybe, <laughs> I was knitting the Puffed Polo by May UKP. And I was making it in linen quill that Mega had given me in the rose granite colorway. I have since ripped that out because I just, there was something about that color that I thought, this is just not me. And it was actually a very interesting experience I don't think I've ever had before. I would pick it up to knit it. I would knit a part of a row and I would have to put it down. I actually had like a physical reaction to knitting that. But I really liked the yarn and it was a present from Mecca. So I was like, I need to make this. But I realized this is just not gonna be this. So then I started experimenting with a couple of bright pinks. I thought, what if I put the rose granite with like a bright pink, how would that work? And I striped them in it and I was like, yeah, this is pretty good. And I kept showing them to friends. People were like, yeah, that's pretty good. And then Mega actually said, maybe it's the rose granite. Maybe that's just not the right color. And so I was like, you know, that gave me the permission to go, yeah, I think it maybe isn't. So then I thought, okay, well, I'll find something to go with the pink. And then I thought, oh, wait a second, it doesn't have to be pink. If it's no longer with the rose granite, I can do whatever. So I decided that I wanted to make the simple stripe pullover using this green with a cream color, actually by Hillesvog, so we'll fit the Nordic, uh, Nordic Cal um, stripe with this. And I was like, that that's gonna be really, really, really wonderful. So I'm going to have to adapt the pattern and hopefully I'm able to adapt it well because it will be um, it'll be a few stitches off in the gauge, but I haven't swatched with it yet. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see. But that is something that I really want to make uh, this fall because I was very excited by it. I was swatching. I really wanted to cast it on and I was just frustrated that I couldn't it just couldn't didn't look quite right. So the other skein that I bought is this one skein. And just so you know, this is the colorway, what was it called again? Staycation. This is called Staycation. I ended up buying uh, one skein of the Sunday Morning DK in this colorway called Manny Petty. And this is actually to go 
as an accent color with another Sandra DK yarn. I cannot remember the colorway right now and it's up in the closet, but there is a new pattern coming out um, and I'll be pairing this with that. And it's, um, it's a pattern where there's cables and there's baubles and the baubles are in a different color. And so the baubles will be in this color, whereas the rest of the sweater is kind of a dusty, rosy pink. So um, yeah, and this is actually just about the same color as my nail polish. So that's all I bought at, at Knit City. I bought the two skeins of mohair and then these ones from Sonder. I was definitely tempted by a lot, but I really wanted to keep it to things that I knew I wanted to make. And, uh, and that's that. So as I said, lots of other things came into my life. Um, I also actually bought, a, uh, somebody was willing to sell, sell me a plate of Nutidin. I have one plate in this and she sold me uh, a second, the second plate so that I could make a lento out of this. And I picked this up um, from Julie at, uh, at Knit City Montreal. She brought it for me. Um, and there are some other things in the, from the D stash, but I'll show them to you when, when I'm knitting with them. These were the main, main ones that I wanted to show you. So thank you for joining me today. Hopefully you enjoyed the little bit of footage. I didn't get as much footage as I had thought I would at Knit City. Um, I spent a lot of time talking to people and I thought I should have taken, you know, selfies with these people, but it didn't happen. I, I just, I was taken up in the moment. But it really was wonderful and uh, a really great weekend. Absolutely lovely. Came back with so many ideas swimming in my head and um, really lovely to spend time with uh, Mega and Mel. We just had a good time together. So I'll leave you with a last little bit of conversation with them and uh, about what they were wearing and what we were wearing. So today at the festival, I wore my Afra with just a jean skirt, nothing very exciting, but my two friends here have entirely handmade wardrobes and I thought I'd show you. you wanna, are you gonna interview me? Yeah, so <laughs> Mel from yeah. Mel Makes Stuff is here in her glorious outfit, which is totally handmade. And I know that you're gonna talk about this on your own episode, but do you wanna just briefly describe? Sure, yeah. So these are the Arthur Pants by So Liberated. They're in a Robert Kaufman linen, metallic linen. They're beautiful. A uh, little bit scratchy, but you gotta do what you gotta do for Yeah. Fashion. And then this is my own design, uh, made specifically to fit my strange shape. <laughs> so, <laughs> Nothing strange. Yeah. And it's I'm beautiful. very proud of my zipper install. It's really gorgeous. Ready? Thank you. And then we've got Mega. Hello. Hi. So what are you wearing on top? So I'm wearing the Alanis top. It's a design by Elizabeth Smith. Yeah. And I made it in Pearl Soho Lantern yarn. Um, it's really beautiful. And then the skirt is Estuary skirt by So Liberated in a linen fabric I got from Joanne. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So that is it for today. And uh, I'll see you again soon. I think I want to talk a little bit more about summer knits next time. I'm a little late. I'm usually more in the April, May time when I talk about summer knits, but with the travel and everything, it just didn't really happen. I'll talk a little bit more about that next time. And, uh, and I'll see you then. Take care.